everyone loves a good vintage car. There's some kind of mechanical connection you get to a car that makes you shift your own gears or power your own steering. So why aren't we all driving vintage cars? Well, I think we've gotten used to cars that start every time we turn the key. Or cars that we don't have to let warm up for a good while before we go to work. Maybe we don't have time anymore to fettle carburetors or adjust points or keep old mechanisms in line. A few years ago, Holly developed the Sniper EFI, which is an all-in-one electronic fuel injection system that literally bolts on in place of your carburetor. They even sell a master kit that comes with the fuel pump, fuel lines, relays, and wire harness you need to bring your old car into the 21st century. So this is my 1980 Ford Pinto. I've had this car about 10 years now and it's been very good to me, even though I was pretty rough on it in my college years. However, last year it really started to show its age. The nearly 40 year old gaskets and seals had so badly deteriorated that it developed a nasty rear main seal leak and it started burning oil due to bad valve stem seals. I got to the point where I needed to make a decision. My Pinto either needed some serious work or I needed to send it to a nice farm upstate. As you can tell, I opted for the former. But if I was going to overhaul an entire engine, I wanted to make some improvements that would modernize my little Pinto without sacrificing the charm and pizzazz that only a vintage car can provide. I settled on improving engine performance with a new intake, exhaust, a mild street cam, and the piece de resistance electronic fuel injection. Fuel injection was the most important component in my Pinto Renaissance because it would make my little companion more powerful and more consistent. You see, I had this fantasy that if someone had to move my car for some reason, I could just toss them the keys. Without a 30 minute rundown on starting procedures and if then flow charts, they could just get in my car, turn the key and drive it like a late model. So, after a deep dive into the internet, reviewing all my EFI options, I settled on the Holley Sniper 2300 throttle body injection system. The 2300 is a two barrel throttle body injection system with a Holley footprint, so it would bolt right up to my new to me Offenhauser intake manifold. In order to simplify the installation, I purchased this Sniper EFI master kit, so I would have all the parts I needed to get the project up and running in the least amount of time. After all, the Pinto is my daily driver. I only had a week of vacation time saved up, so I had a pretty steep deadline to get my project completed. So I yanked the engine out and pulled it apart, only to find that the motor was in excellent shape. The cylinders even still had the cross hatching from the factory honing.
I sent the head off to be resurfaced and gave the whole motor a fresh coat of Ford Blue. The cam I chose for my fresh motor was the Comp Cam's 240H. Now this cam has just a smidge more lift and duration than the factory cam because I just wanted a streetable cam with a bit better profile. The header I decided to install was designed for a Ford Ranger, which meant it already had provisions to fit an O2 sensor for the EFI, which is one less thing for me to worry about. My father even flew down to Texas from Montana for the engine installation ceremony. With a little bit of wiring, it was ready to fire up for the first time. Even though I hadn't completed the exhaust system and was running an open header, which is a big no-no if you read the Holly Sniper instruction manual. After that, it was a frantic race to get everything plumbed and to get the exhaust finished in order for me to make it to work on Monday. Which brings us to today, one year and 5,000 miles later. And I'd like to give you a little tour of my fuel injected Pinto, showing you the strengths and weaknesses of this setup, what worked, what didn't, and what speed bumps I hit along the way. Let's start with a rundown of my Pinto's powertrain. In 1980, the only engine option available was the 2.3 liter overhead cam four cylinder that developed around 88 horsepower. This is the same power plant that went on to power the Thunderbird, the Mustang, and the Ranger long after the Pinto nameplate was retired. And the engine is mated to the FOG, Ford of Germany, top loading four speed manual transmission. Now it's pretty clear to me that Holly intended this setup to be used on larger two barrel V8 engines. In fact, I haven't found many people who do run this setup on a smaller displacement four cylinder engine. That being said, it does work quite well on this motor, but because it is intended for a larger V8 engine, I found that the throttle throw is a little too short. Now I typically drive this thing around town using 10% throttle or less. So I ended up feeling more like a throttle switch than a throttle pedal. I remedied this issue by extending the throttle arm just a tad with a little bracket. I ended up shaping it like a Stratocaster just for grins. Moving on from there, I did need to modify my throttle cable bracket. You see the Pinto came with a Weber 3236 carburetor, which has the throttle linkage on this side of the engine. So I just cut and welded my factory throttle cable bracket to accommodate a different direction throttle pull. To finish it off, I shot it with a little spray on bed liner to hide my crimes, Adam Savage. Next, I need to talk about another part I needed to source before my little project could get on the road. Now the sniper setup comes with these straight barbed AN fittings that fit the supplied fuel lines. And if I was mounting this setup on a V8 engine where the throttle body would be right on top, I wouldn't have a problem. But because of the inline layout, my fuel return line was headed directly into my valve cover. I remedied this by sourcing a 90 degree AN adapter 
that I found at a local hydraulic shop. One of my absolute favorite features on the Holley Sniper is this provisional input-output harness. Now this harness allows the sniper to control external components like electric cooling fans and receive inputs from external components like your AC compressor. I'm using the harness to control my Flexolite 14 inch electric cooling fan and I have to say it works spectacularly. Not only does it keep my Pinto running cool while I'm stuck in traffic on a hot Texas summer day, but getting rid of the old mechanical fan dramatically reduced the amount of time it takes my engine to reach operating temperature. Now the sniper controls electric cooling fans through a ground switch, so you'll need to use a relay. Well, I recommend using a relay anytime you wire in an electric cooling fan. I currently have my sniper set up to turn my electric cooling fan on at 190 degrees. Then it kicks back off when the engine temperature reaches 185 degrees. Moving on to the interior of my Pinto, I ended up mounting my display right here in my center console cubby. The display is another one of my favorite features of the sniper setup. You can configure it almost any way you want, and it's like driving around with a scan tool hooked up to your car. You can display any data that the sniper measures, and even set up customized warning lights for certain parameters. I've got mine set up to read out engine coolant temperature, battery voltage, throttle position, whether or not my cooling fan is running, engine vacuum, my idle air controller position, my air fuel ratio, my current learn percentage, which is basically a short term fuel trim, whether or not the system's in open loop or closed loop, and two different tachometers one an old mechanical style, and the other a digital readout. Now I'd like to show you one of fuel injection's most attractive features consistency. Here's what it used to take to start my car before going to work. Now keep in mind this was a moderately warm day, around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and the car had not been started in a few days. You can see there's a lot of pumping to get the engine primed to start. And once it does light off, it doesn't like to do much until there's some heat in it. Now let's contrast that with electronic fuel injection. Now this was recorded under nearly the exact same conditions, around 60 degrees, and the engine had not been running several days. Just turn the key and the engine starts. And right off the bat, it's ready to go. I can literally pull right out of the driveway seconds after starting the engine. Now if you do start your car on a very cold day and you think the engine's going to need a little extra help, you can use the sniper's prime shot function. You just turn the key to the on position, wait for the fuel pump to stop running, and start the engine. The sniper puffs a little bit of extra fuel through the throttle body to get this prime shot ready to go. Well, now that I feel like we know each other a little better, I'm ready to show you the most embarrassing part of my installation. The part where it becomes evident that I did this whole project with a pretty steep deadline. The fuel lines. Now the Sniper Master Kit does include the 3 8 pressure rated rubber fuel lines that the Sniper requires for the pump and return lines. Now the manual even suggests that you drill into your fuel filler neck to mount your return line. Now due to the notorious metal filler neck of the Ford Pinto, that wasn't possible for me. And also, because of my time crunch, 
I resorted to using some pretty hokey hardware store line adapters to fit the 5 16 feed and quarter inch return lines out of my factory sending unit into the 3 8 Holly lines. You can also see that a mixture of my own haste and the nature of a soft rubber fuel line has resulted in this hideous colostomy bag of a fuel system. I mounted my fuel pump to the first suitable external tab I could find on the frame and the fuel filters are suspended by the lines themselves. Now I'm not sure if it's a symptom of my cobbled together fuel line adapters running a 3 8 line into a quarter inch return or if it's some scale that has broken loose from my 40 year old gas tank but this holly fuel pump is loud it is so loud that when i give people rides they almost inevitably ask me what's that sound Now I do have a new fuel tank and plans to fabricate some proper fuel lines in the near future. So stay tuned for that video. But I mostly just wanted to make sure that this system was going to work on my car. A car it wasn't designed for and honestly I'm sure it was never intended to go on. But all that aside, it works spectacularly. It works so great that I've had a year of hassle free driving, even with my cobbled together fuel system. And that's also why I made this video, so that maybe you'll be inspired to save that vintage car that's sitting in your driveway. Because there's a whole world of cars out there, outside of Mustangs and Camaros. Cars that are just as stunning and exciting, and there's no reason not to drive them. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can check out the full build video on this little 78 Toyota Corolla. And if you want to get notifications when I release new videos, hit that notification bell. Lonnie, you're in the shot. You ruined my shot. Go get Tony. Come on, phone. Who's texting me? Man, that's a loud motorcycle. Golly.